Hey, good morning, everybody. Well, this weekend was the big Freedom Rally in Oxford. I was there um, uh, on the day, which was fantastic. But there was something else that was going on this weekend as well, which was the Munich Security Conference. And leaders uh, from around the world were there, particularly NATO leaders and so on. I think it's an annual conference and they talk about what they want to talk about. But of course, this year, uh, the leaders of the Collective West in particular are talking about the situation in Ukraine. Um, the UK's Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, was there. I mean, he wasn't elected to be the Prime Minister at all. It was uh, He was installed in some kind of coup last year, a coup d'etat, if you like. But he was there at the Munich Security Conf Conference and he gave a speech. And his speech was very concerning to say the least. And the key thing he said in his speech is that the UK would be the first country to supply long range weapons to Ukraine. Presumably that means weapons that um, the Zelensky regime forces can fire into Russian territory. Um, in a manner that they haven't done before. He also spoke about giving Ukraine everything they need to win against Russia. So he's obviously there uh, acknowledging that there is a proxy war now between the West and Russia, and they're going to support Ukraine, give it um, air defences, build up their air force, is what he said. So that could only mean that Western countries have already somehow, without announcing it, but some on some level, um, subconsciously, he's uh, re relaying the decision uh, that's probably already been made somewhere to give Ukraine um, Western um, aircraft, you know, um, F-16s or whatever, fighter jets, I don't know what's been decided, but that was the language he was using. We're going to build up the Ukraine's air forces so they can win against Russia. Well, I mean, the whole, um, you know, way of thinking, this whole way of thinking is absolutely crazy because this is a conflict that never had to happen in the first place. As I've said many times, the Minsk agreements were there. If everybody had stuck to them, there wouldn't be this conflict. And, you know, I don't have any sympathy for the National Socialists who are in the Azov Battalion, who are around the Zelensky regime. But what's happening at the moment is they're now recruiting boys, 16-year-old boys who have never fought anything in their lives, you know, or well, maybe they've had school fights, but, you know, they're putting them into the meat grinder of the front line in the Donbass, which is like, you know, the, the, the line across Belgium in the First World War, where hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people are just going to kill each other to advance, you know, a, a kilometre a day or a few metres a day and then a few metres back and, and so on. This is a terrible war of attrition going on now. That is never acknowledged or recognised by these people who stand up on these grandiose stages in Munich and other places and say, oh, we're going to continue to give money and weapons to Zelensky to fight Russia until Russia's defeated um, without at all recognising the terrible cost to poor young Ukrainian Christian men who are being sent to die uh, by these people who are globalists, who want to turn Russia into what Ukraine has been. You know, this is their goal of some people. It's openly stated by some people in the US State Department. They want regime change in Russia. They have enjoyed um, totally colonizing Ukraine and turning it into a hellhole of money laundering, people trafficking and corruption. And they want to do the same to Russia. But you know, there's some good things about Russia. They are financially solvent. They don't have national debt. They don't have a foreign controlled central bank so they can control their own economy and be self-sufficient and grow prosperity for their own people. Um, they're also protecting their children from all this um, alphabet nonsense, LGBs, this all nonsense, you know, that is 
being propagated all over the Western world to, you know, to such an extent that children are having their bodies, you know, terrible things are happening to to children, um, you know, in, in the West that has been done in the name of all this alphabet ideology, to put it like that. Uh, Russia protects its children from that. So does Hungary and uh, so does Poland, actually. Um, but but most of the West doesn't. And they're spreading this. They want to, the elites in the West want to spread this around the world to Africa and other places. So they, you know, and so Russia stands against that. Good for them. Um, but, you know, that's just an aside. But this terrible war of attrition is just going on and on. It could stop tomorrow if people wanted it to and say look let's just sit down and negotiate a peace the people in the east and south of ukraine who want to be part of russia because they are ethnic russians who were oppressed for eight years under poroshenko and now zelensky let them be part of russia if they want to i'm having a problem with that it's got absolutely nothing to do with the united kingdom or france or germany or america or canada or australia it doesn't make a blind bit of difference to the nations in the west whether you know, Donetsk and Luhansk and Zaporozhye are part of Russia or part of Ukraine. It doesn't matter at all. Let's just negotiate a peace and stop the killing from happening. But no, some of the people are just, you know, they, they have, it seems, an absolute visceral hatred uh, for Russia and uh, want to carve it up and uh, exploit it as I said, like they've done to Ukraine and like they've done to other countries around the world who have a lot of resources. Um, that seems to be the reason why this is going on. Not the ordinary people that want it, but the people who have assumed power in the West, yeah, often through um, questionable ballot procedures. Let's just say that. So uh, a very, very dangerous speech by Rishi Sunak there escalating tensions again but you know how far is this going to escalate are you going to escalate all the way to a nuclear uh conflict because that is just insane uh that is why this is different to any other situation around the world and or has been in the past and, and anywhere else you know because there's the potential for nuclear conflict and then everybody loses. There's no winner in a nuclear conflict. So back away from it and just leave it alone. And let's go back to the Minsk agreements and let's sit down and stop this insanity uh, from continuing. But it seems in the UK, all of the establishment parties are just pushing and propagandizing the same line of escalating the tension. The Tories, the fake Conservatives, Reform UK and Richard Tice, Labour, Lib Dems, Greens, they are all wanting more money and weapons to be sent to the Zelensky regime and the associated National Socialists to keep this war of attrition going on and on and on for who knows how many years. Um, it is completely... Uh, the wrong future for our country, for Ukraine, Russia and the whole world. In the UK, the Heritage Party, which I lead, is the only party that has been calling for de-escalation of this conflict from the very beginning. And we still call for that as well. And uh, if we were in charge, we would not be sending any more money to the Zelensky regime or any more weapons to the Zelensky regime well because we've just we've got our own problems we've got a huge national debt in this country I mean the fake conservative government is borrowing over a hundred billion pounds this year so they're still to send the money they want to send you know, Rishi Sunak was there in Munich boasting he's going to send more money 
to Ukraine in the next few months as he did in the whole of 2022. So he's escalating uh, and uh, the amount of money he's sending there. But he's having to borrow the money. It's not money that we have in this country. He's borrowing money, getting the country further into debt in order to perpetrate a war where hundreds of thousands of poor young men are getting sent to their deaths every you know, month or so on, um, which is completely unnecessary and could be stopped at any time if people had the will uh, to do that. There was a peace was nearly negotiated twice at the very beginning. The former uh, prime minister of Israel is not anymore, but he was Raphael Bennett. He seems to be one of the, the you know few good people who have been a prime minister of Israel. He actually brought Zelensky and uh, Putin to Israel to have a peace discussion, and they nearly agreed something at the beginning, before it had even gone on a few days. But then, apparently, Boris Johnson came in and scuppered the deal. And then in April 2022, Erdogan in Turkey brought Putin and Zelensky there. They again had talks. They nearly agreed uh, to stop the fighting, to end the conflict. But again, Boris Johnson uh, got hold of Zelensky, uh, went to visit him, said, don't make a peace. Apparently, that's what was uh, been reported. And then, you know, I don't know what they said to each other, but clearly soon after he went, that there was no peace and the war just continued and escalated and escalated. And, um, you know, then we have the the pipelines, uh, Nord Stream pipelines blown up. Uh, Seymour Hirsch, the acclaimed journalist, uh, has done some research into that. And his report says that this was done by America and Norway, um, which is, you know, just uh, disastrous uh, for the West. We have no moral leg to stand on in this conflict anymore. Um, but the hypocrisy of people who who point the finger, you know, at Russia, saying they are, what they, what they've done is illegal, but completely ignore what the United States uh, did in Iraq, which was. Yeah, <laughs> that was for no good reason. That was for a lie. The West invaded Iraq on the basis of Tony Blair's dodgy dossier that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. But it was all made up so that it gave people an excuse to invade Iraq. This is justified because the Zelensky regime or pushed and backed by the deep states, uh, the deep states of NATO countries, um, uh, ignored the Minsk agreements and were killing and shelling and maiming and making homeless ethnic Russians in the east of Ukraine for eight years. So, you know, Putin has gone in with a special military operation to try to protect ethnic Russians who were being oppressed terribly by the West supporting uh, their proxy um government that they installed by a coup in 2014. That's the reality of the situation, which of course is never acknowledged on most of the mainstream media, unless I get a chance to go on uh, and speak about it myself. And there's, you know, a small number of commentators, uh, you know, who will say the same thing, Dominique Samuels and, and so on, who would, uh, you know, uh, speak the truth as well. But not very many people uh, will speak the truth about this because the propaganda is so huge and overwhelming to try to get people to support an escalation of a war which might end up with everybody being wiped out in a nuclear conflagration. So open your eyes, everybody, and see what's going on and um, stop backing this escalation in this conflict. But of course, this week, I think we're going to see a huge ramping up of propaganda um, to escalate because uh, it's Friday will be the 24th of February, so the one year anniversary of the beginning of the special military operation uh, last year in 2022. So Rishi Sunak has called for a minute's silence to mark that uh, on Friday. Well, I won't be silent. Um, 
Ah, I might listen to the Russian national anthem at the time. Anyway, to fight this insanity politically, please come and join me in the Heritage Party, heritageparty.org. We are against escalating the war. We are for de-escalating, finding a peace, stopping the killing and making the world a more secure place again, which is the opposite of what Western leaders and NATO are doing at the moment. NATO is not now uh, making the world more secure. It's making the world less secure. It's doing the wrong thing. We stand against making the world less secure and we stand for peace. <laughs>